In our last video, we took a deep dive on this, the EVE Energy Smart Plug. We tested it out and compared the newest generation to its predecessor, and I don't want to spoil that video if you've not already seen it, but safe to say that this is one of my favourite smart home products of all time. My name is Stephen, and welcome to HeyTechie. Here at HeyTechie, we're interested in all things to do with the Apple Smart Home, ranging from HomeKit to Siri shortcuts, and absolutely everything in between. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next video. But in this video, I'll be showing off three of our top recommendations about how you can use this smart plug and get the most out of it. Stick around till the end too, because there are some bonus tips as well. But first, let's remind ourselves of the two key features of this specific device, smart control and energy monitoring. Smart plugs are the bread and butter of any smart home. By connecting your devices to one of these plugs, you'll be able to turn it off and on using a voice assistant like Siri, remotely via an app when you're away from home, or via a schedule when you can set it up in advance. Energy monitoring is not something which is on most smart plugs, especially those that are compatible with HomeKit. In its most basic form, energy monitoring will allow you to see clearly how much electricity whatever device you've plugged in to the smart plug is using. And you'd be amazed at just how much juice many of our everyday items are using, especially those that are on standby. In fact, according to the Energy Saving Trust here in the UK, the average home wastes £55 a year, leaving energy sucking devices on standby. And that's before you factor in the huge price increases we're currently seeing at the moment. And that brings us to our first use, which is to use your EVE Energy to test out precisely how much energy your devices at home are already using. Now this will be a faster process if you've got more than one smart plug, but after picking one of these up, I would highly recommend going around your home and testing it out on a number of different devices, especially your TVs, game consoles, and set-top boxes, which you don't necessarily need to have plugged in all of the time, and where you could cut down on your electricity bill by using a smart plug on them. The EVE Energy will use a tiny amount of power when it is plugged in, but it's significantly less than what your TV or Xbox is using even when it's on standby, so it's a good trade-off to make. Our second top use for the EVE Energy is for lighting in your home. This tip largely applies to the EVE Energy third generation because it has thread connectivity. Now, I've spoken a lot about Thread in previous videos and how it works, but in a nutshell, this means that if you're going to have a HomePod Mini, you're going to be guaranteed reliability and lightning fast response times. Now, I don't know about you, but there's something uniquely frustrating about smart homes when the lights don't work as quickly as they should, so the EVE Energy is a particularly good choice for this, I find. Another top tip is to use it for lights that have awkward to reach plug sockets on the wall. Dare I say it, we are now closer to Christmas than to the start of the year, and I'm sure that most of us have had trouble awkwardly crawling underneath our Christmas trees to turn the lights off at night. A smart plug completely circumnavigates this problem. Finally, our third and final pick for the best use for the EVE Energy is for space heaters and fans. As Europe continues to swelter this summer, I know that the EVE Energy is my go-to device for controlling the fans in the house. And likewise, when temperatures fall, it's the only smart plug that I personally trust with being connected to a space heater. This again comes back to the reliability of the device, and that I can keep an eye directly on how much energy I'm using, and how much the electricity is costing me. And this is particularly important when using the space heater, since it is a very power-hungry device, and when you're trying to stick to a strict budget, it can really help you keep an eye on things. I also take a lot of comfort from knowing that should I accidentally leave the heater on when I go out, thanks to HomeKit's geofencing features, the EVE Energy will turn the heater off at the wall directly, which reduces the risk of an accidental fire. I also like that I can check if the heater is off when I'm away from home too. So there you have it then, that's my three top uses for your EVE Energy smart plugs. Of course, a lot of these tips also apply to other smart plugs as well. Do you think I've missed any of the big ones? Or is this list pretty perfect? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment too down below, it's always very much appreciated. 
Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. To round off this video, here's a few more of my favourite ways to use smart plugs. If you know you can be a bit forgetful and leave devices on by accident at home before you're heading out for the day, having the EVE Energy plugged in will save you a tidy sum and help keep your home safer by preventing devices being on when you are away. If you're relatively new to HomeKit, having swapped from Amazon or Google, or you're on a budget, you might not have a camera that is compatible with HomeKit secure video. Now, I personally really like the SwitchBot tilt cameras, since they're good for privacy in the home anyway, but if you want to use them with a HomeKit setup, you might consider using an EVE Energy Smart Plug and the geofencing feature to turn the cameras on when you're away from home, but off at the wall when you are at home. And that way you know for absolute certain that it's not recording you when you're at home. This one needs a little prep, but you can use a smart plug with your kettle. Just make sure to fill it with the desired amount of water first, and then push the switch down whilst the smart plug is off. When the smart plug then turns on, the kettle will start boiling. This is a really good one to try, as it lets you see what the difference in power usage can be between a quarter filled and a half filled kettle. A great experiment if you want to be more energy conscious this winter.